tonight on Social News Network, an American family living the American dream, or so we think. We go inside the former residence and discuss social inequality. The foremans, Red, Kitty, Eric, and close friends Bob Midge and Donna Pinciotti, and Fez, the foreign exchange student, are the focus of tonight's program. Tonight, we discuss class, gender, race, and intersectionality. We start with Red Foreman. Red, a hardworking American man, has recently been laid off from his job. He expected things would go much differently than the way they did. Here's what he thought might have happened after leaving the military. That Hirohito, and that. Yes, with America's victory overseas now complete, our fighting boys return home, where the American working man takes his rightful place on the throne. Hi, honey. How was your day? They gave me another raise. Oh, honey, with all the money you make, it's no wonder I don't have to work. Daughter Lori has a question. Daddy, why is the American economy the envy of the world? Well, says Dad, it's because the American worker is experienced, loyal, and hardworking. <laughs> Looks like Junior has some good news. Say, Dad, you can stop giving me money now. I just got a football scholarship to Notre Dame. I guess experience, loyalty, and hard work really do pay off. Daughter Lori has another question. Daddy, can you tell me why Germany and Japan's economies never recovered? It's simple. They are not experienced. They are not hardworking. They are not loyal. And they do not speak English. Speaking of work, Mom has to go grocery shopping. Can I have the keys to the Cadillac? <laughs> Forget the Cadillac. Take the hovercraft. Red, the hovercraft? Fun little clip. Now we go to our expert analyst to tell us more about class inequality. Uh, in America, social class is uh, very diverse. Um, a lot of people, uh, especially in America, there's a perception that the, uh, the upper middle classes are kind of the typical American experience. Um, in reality, there's a lot of people who live in the working class and the working poor than the, in the lower classes. And that even though there's a high percentage of these people, um, in fact, roughly 12% of Americans are living below the poverty line, and yet there's still this uh, persistent notion that um, the American dream is alive and well and everyone enjoys a middle upper class kind of lifestyle. Collins has an interesting idea of voyeurism where people become these voyeurs in the upper class and upper class people feel like they don't need to conserve them, concern themselves with those in the lower class and what they do is not important to them. It's kind of a rich versus poor. And so class is usually seen as kind of like a hierarchy like people on the upper class kind of have more authority to be in charge than people in the lower classes. Gender is another hot subject of inequality these days. Some people believe that men should be men and women women. Girls are supposed to be feminine, boys masculine, and females are supposed to be subordinate in this patriarchal society. Let's take a look how backwards it is in the foreman's world. Donna, your mother was fine until she met those feminists and started thinking. <laughs> You better watch out, Eric, because it's all fun when you're making out on the couch, but then they get bigger and bitchier. <laughs> eh, no offense, honey. <laughs> Bob sure doesn't understand equality. Look at him here. Midge, you don't know the first thing about having a business. But there's no risk, Bob. Why not? Because it's your money. <laughs> Kitty, don't you think I should have my own car shop? Midgey, hold on. I think I have a dynamite solution. Really? Oh, yeah. Because I love you. So I want you to have another baby and stop bugging me. Oh, Bob, no. So how much this whole setup gonna cost you, Bob? Plenty. But I figure it'll be cheaper than a divorce. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Along with men supposedly being more masculine, they should be better at sports than women. 
Watch here as Donna beats Eric in basketball and the outcome that takes place. And that's game! Man, what a slaughter! I just swiped the core with you from one end to the other! Woo! I gotta go inside, but I'll leave the light on. I don't want you to gloat in the dark. Well, hey, Eric, do we want your balls back? Okay, now look, that's a little uncalled for. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Donna gloats and makes Eric feel inferior for losing. So when Eric's friends find out, their reaction is maybe even a little bit more harsh. You know, in my country, if a woman beats you, it makes her want you. Really? Yes, but this is America. Woos. Kelso! Kelso! Would you stop that? Woos, 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 woos! Eric falls out of his gender role and becomes a social pariah. He should also be smarter than girls because he's a man, and that, in their instance, is what men do. But this isn't the case, of course. Let's see how it goes when we find out how Eric SAT scores compared to Donna's. And even a little racism may come into light with Fez. Wait, so the SATs are in? Donna, did you, did you see your scores yet? Yeah, this morning. I got a 12.30. What? A 12.30? That's great. Why didn't you say something? Well, I didn't want to brag. I mean, yeah, I kicked ass, but it's no big deal. I got an 800. That's it? That's it? If 100's an A, eight of them's an A++. plus <laughs> plus. No, no, Mrs. Foreman, an 800's not good. I mean, a pigeon can peck a better score than that. Really? Donna did better, Fez did too. And his whole country's made of bamboo. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> I'll just, um, I'll go home and take down the streamers. So, in all of these examples, let's have our expert tell us why gender equality, or should I say inequality, is such a big deal. Sex and gender are another way people kind of get uh, separated into groups. Um, and in most, you know, in society, men and women always have different roles. Um, in the Western society, in the United States, men are expected to be, you know, the breadwinners. They go out and get jobs. They're supposed to be tough and manly. And there's a lot of things society decides will be masculine traits. And women are treated the same way. They're expected to be nurturing and to watch kids while daddy's at work, you know, to clean house. There's different roles people are expected to fulfill. And even though these roles might change over time or be different in different cultures, uh, men and women always have their own distinct identities and their distinct roles. The stratification of gender plays a large part in, with unequal distribution of wealth, power, and prestige, mostly in the workplace. You see a lot of men getting ahead while women kind of get the short end of the stick. Um, and according to Weston Zimmerman, gender roles are sort of established by how people act. In other words, uh, a man is, or a male is seen as man because he acts manly, he acts masculine, he does things that men do, and a woman, women will be seen as feminine because they act that way, and because society expects them to be that way because they're placed in that group um, for being a woman. Moving from gender inequality to race, we see people think that being from a different race hurts your intelligence or social stature, maybe even your opportunities in life. Here we have Fez, the foreign exchange student, and his girlfriend's parents. Let's see how they feel about their relationship. Honey, you are really broadening your horizons. Having a friend like this is going to look great on your college application. Yes, we always enjoy meeting Nina's friends. Oh, you keep calling me her friend. Don't you mean her boyfriend? Her boyfriend? <laughs> boyfriend? Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, you can't be her boyfriend. Why not? Because you're... Uh, what's the word, honey? Uh, different. Okay, different. <laughs> oh, I see. You mean not white? Fez, no. I think I'll be leaving now. Good day. Fez, wait. I said good day. <laughs> Smell that? Racism. When the parents looked at Fez as a charity case, they loved him. But when he said that they were dating, they instantly cast him out because he's not the same as they are. Fez, also seen as unintelligent sometimes because he is foreign to the United States, 
gets a bad rap, even though clearly he is an intelligent human being. Give it up, Kelso. I have a right to bear arms, all right? That's in the Constitution. Kelso, not everything in the Constitution makes sense. Oh, fish, shut up. What did you say? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Foreigners, I hear you. Yet another stereotype we see of a foreigner or somebody of a different race or culture is the stereotype of Fez is always in the middle. It feels so good not to be the monkey in the middle. <laughs> dance, monkey, dance! All of these are such sad examples of racial inequality. Wonder what our expert analyst has to say about this. Let's find out now. A lot of people think race is purely physical. They think, you know, it's physical differences um, that separate people into groups. But race is actually a social category. Um, the only reason the physical differences matter is because society decided that they matter and so that, you know, they create race. You know, and ethnicity is more of the cultural, you know, of <clears throat> like different traditions and values um, make people their own separate group. So there is a difference there between race and ethnicity. And uh, what these things do is they cause people to treat each other a little differently, you know, and people fall into different um, categories, like in, such as in America, uh, white people tend to, you know, be favored because they are the majority. And so they get the more favored economic positions and while the other races kind of just get stratified to the lower classes and the lower end of things. Once society has established the different races and, and uh, different ethnic groups, um, then we can see someone as part of a group, and there's these kind of ideas that these groups exist. And what happens is that uh, different groups can uh, see another group as a threat to them, you know, as a competition for jobs and, you know, and resources and places to live. And, and people can blame that group when things don't go well for them. So that's where a lot of things like racism and the competition between races uh, comes from. Intersectionality, another big topic. What's a bigger issue? Being poor or being foreign? All come together to play as a disadvantage for Fez. Poor person! Bring me a fancy cocktail! It is my privilege to wait on you, madam. Oh, quite so, quite so. All right, enough with the idle chatter. Go be poor. First, I crave a French pastry. Where's the help? Apologies, good sire. I was in the stables brushing the horses, secretly entertaining notions of a sensual tryst with a lady. <laughs> Top drawer! Top drawer! In both of these fantasies, the white male and female are seen as above the poor foreign boy, further devaluing Fez regardless of his intelligence and ability. It makes me ask, why is this this way? The combination of these three you know, aspects, like sex, race, and gender, and ethnicity, um, and class even, can have a very strong influence on where someone ends up being placed in the social ladder. Uh, in ex for example, you know, a male has you know, a higher chance of getting higher than a female. If he's a white male, that chance goes up even more. But if it's, you know, males also have a higher chance of being incarcerated or put in jail and if that male is black you know that negative aspect is also um, intensified or augmented by the fact that he's black too and if he's in a lower social class or he's from like a poor area that goes up even more and so and so you know personal personal merit or you know working really hard can get you to move up in society in America but um, these three sociological factors they play a big part in influencing where you're going to end up overall. Wow, so many examples from the Foreman family and friends. Hopefully they figure out that America could be a better place with equality. With the Social News Network, I'm Casey Richardson. Good night.